We're here to empower high income earners to gain back control of your time through financial independence and stop trading your time for money and start letting your money work harder for you. And hey, if you want to meet other high income earners on their FIRE journey, join our high income earners FIRE Facebook group. Every month we'll have guest speakers and we'll share about what our team is currently working on and allow you to share what you are working on with other high income earners. So hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of High Income Earners Fire Podcast. I am your co-host, Cody Ye. And today we have a special guest and we've been talking about for so long. She's a real estate investor out of California. Like always, I always butcher where she actually lives. She's a mom, young mom with a few kids. <laughs> got sent back to work. So she wasn't able to be my co-host. And now uh, she is finally finding some time to catch up with me after four months. And today I introduced her or I invited her to come on to really talk about a two-part series. So first thing we're going to talk about time management. How does a mom with two kids or a few kids, I don't know, maybe more coming. Two. I, don't I don't know. I say few because who knows, maybe. <laughs> two, that's it. <laughs> okay, two, that's it for now. How, how does a mom of two kids, young mom, have a career, have a W-2 job and still be able to manage everything and still continue to push on growing her real estate portfolio, right? And for me, I'm not single anymore. I'm engaged. And my fiance works for a corporate job, nine to five, and I have more freedom. I travel around more, reach my so-called fire life. But how do I manage my time? Like, in case you guys don't know, I'm actually the efficiency freak. Not because that I want to push for it, just really because I want to be more efficient so I can have more time to do things I really like. So without me further ado, let's hear the pretty voice. Welcome, Arlene. Thank you, Cody. It's good to be back on. <laughs> so that started out with, I know four months ago, we we're having this conversation that, hey, Cody, I'm going to quote unquote break up with you because I need to go back to work. I need to do my long commute. And how does that been for the last four months? And what do you have to adjust in your life to make everything kind of still come together? I think for me, what needed to happen was I really need to get particular about where my time was being spent. I had to really look at my time now because I had less time to spend on the things I other things I wanted to do because I had to commute longer. Um, you know, the time that I had before saving from commuting was now um, going to go away. So I had to really evaluate the time and the activities that I had to do in my life and try to figure out, you know, where can I spend the, my time and look at where what's going to help me move to the next level? And then what are some of the things that I could consistently maintain and keep up? And so laying out all the different tasks that I had on hand and then trying to, you know, figure out where the balance is, because at the same time, we only have so many hours during the daytime and certain things, you know, even though you really want to do them, you just don't have the bandwidth for it anymore. And so you kind of have to look at it and just try to figure out what are some of the sustainable things you can continue like keeping up. And then what are some of the things you can just hold off for a little bit until you stabilize it and then come back to it again. Mm -hmm. So off offline, we chat about your husband, Sela, was actually helping you out with your daily podcast for a little bit as well, right? Was Sela kind of very supportive of you on that? And how did kind of Sela uh, help you on that part? Yeah, I think for me, it's really important that both he and I are on the same page because we need to support each other, especially we have so many things going on um, with the real estate, with our jobs, with the kids, with each other. There's so many activities in our lives. And so we need to be in the same on the same page <laughs> as much as possible. And so if I needed some help, you know, he's so willing to just step up and be like, okay, I can help you with some episodes. You know, when you don't have time to do it, he can step in. Um, there's some other tasks that I needed help with. He'll step in. And so we just need to 
balance it out so that I can kind of stabilize everything. And so maybe he had to pick up a little bit extra where he had some extra time and then to help me out until I kind of got my feet um, all straightened out again. Yeah. And Sayla has a full-time job too, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But then he has a little bit more flexibility because he's an IT, so-called IT, right? The back end things. And then also, you know, he's also good with managing his time too. And I think with having kids, especially, and with all the other activities that we have going on, we really had to be focused and really try to figure out where we're spending all of our activities on a day-to-day basis. And really, like what you said earlier, as efficient as possible with our time, because there's so many things going on. So what does your day look like? Do you mind sharing like a typical day of yours? Like then we're going to go into like the morning routine, which you say you have none, but I want to hear about your day. Let's say if this is a day you have to go to work, you have to commute. How does that kind of day look like? And then, you know, we can talk about what's your biggest breakthrough for the last four months or someone like that, you know, you're on your way to fire. Like how do you survive that and still be healthy? Yes. So now in the mornings, because my commute is so far, I have to get up at like five to five 30 and I would need to leave home by six o'clock to be able to make it to work in time. Cause it's about an hour and a half commute. And so that time that I'm driving, you know, I'm listening to other podcasts or I'm doing some other thinking. I'm utilizing that time as much as I can to focus on the day to day activities and what I have coming forth and, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what are the most important tasks that I need to do coming up for that day or like the most pressing um, deliverables that I have to pr- produce. And so that after that, then like, you know, if I'm going to are work you driving that day, or are you van pooling? I remember no, I'm was. driving. I'm driving. No, at this no point. more of those van pooling. A people take turns. Yes. Driving. Yes. No more of the van pooling. And, and then, so, so what do you do if you thought about something that you need to write it down? Like for me, when I'm driving, I always something came to mind. I need to write it down somewhere. Like how do you do? Like, do you pull it to the side or? No, I don't pull it to the side. I just try to keep, I, I try to keep it in my brain. And so once I'm out of the car and I can get back to my desk, I'll sit down and I'll jot it down so I don't forget it. Mm-hmm. But I keep having to repeat it in my head so I don't forget it. And I'm sure that there's some things that I've missed also um, that I couldn't remember that I had to write down, but I'll mm-hmm. try to like remember, remember what I need to do and then jot it down right as I get, you know, to a place where I can sit down and write it. And okay. So you're listening to podcasts. Planning out for the day, great ideas come to you, try to hold on to it. And then you get to work, I guess. I guess that's work, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll get to work and then I'll focus my time, you know, being a good employee, trying to focus on all the tasks. Um, One of the things I talked to you about also was, you know, I had I got a new role also for the last couple of months. So I was trying to stabilize everything, um, show up to the best as I can, because that's still where my my duty lies. I still need to, you know, work well, produce good results and things. So, you know, my focus there is just about work. So then afterwards, once I'm done for the day, I have to leave a little bit earlier to come home to pick up my kids from daycare. <laughs> and so once I pick them up, it's usually when, around. When is that? Like, when is that when, you're going to pick up your kids from daycare? Yeah. So I usually pick them up around like 4.30 or so. And so um, I pick them up. And then at that point, I have to get them ready, shower them because they're in the sand playing all day. And by the time they get home, they are a mess. <laughs> and there's like, my daughter comes home and she has like food stains all over her clothes, like dirt smeared on her face. They have sand in their shoes. So the first thing that they do is they have to shower because they're going to track everything into the house. So we'll clean them up. And then after that, then we'll have dinner for start preparing dinner and cook. You guys prepare and- or do you have help? No, we prepare it, but sometimes okay. on those days where it's just super hectic, we'll just buy food take and we'll out, just do yeah. takeout and have it at home or something. Um, but yeah, usually we'll try to cook at home if we can. And then so then after we feed them, we have dinner. It's usually around, I would say around seven o'clock by the time we're 
done showering, cooking, eating, cleaning, seven to seven thirty or so. And then at that time, then I'll sit down with them and then we'll spend, you know, play time. Um, we'll do some reading or we'll like play with their toys or something until about eight thirty ish. Mm-hmm. And then we'll start getting them into bed. Mm-hmm. And then before I had to, we had to, kids would want us to stay with them and in the beds with them and sleep with them and read them books. um, And then wait till they fall asleep. And that would just take out the rest of the night because then you get tired and you ended up falling asleep too. So I've had to change it a little bit where we pushed our reading time ahead of that before they go to bed. And then, so that way when they're ready to be put into bed around 8 30 they're tired now at that point and so they can go to sleep on their own and then at that point i'll have time to focus on my other stuff until you know 11 o'clock or something like that when i have to go back to bed and then wake up in the morning again and start all over so you're running on five to six hours of sleep really Mm -hmm. yeah every day constantly for the last four months yes and Everyone's kind of different, but how do you feel about that? Are you, is there someone, you're someone that you can run with that kind of sleep? So it's hard some of the days, more so than the others, Yeah, where it's like, you know, you need a little bit more time to rest um, to recover. And so those days I'll, I'll take those extra times where I need to sleep in an extra hour on the weekend or two, you know, and that's where Sela comes into real, um, into play because he understands that and he'll take the kids, you know, in the morning for like an hour or two while I need some extra rest to recover. Um, but other than that, you know, like you're running because you know, you have these things that you need to accomplish during the daytime. And the only way to accomplish that is by, you know, maybe pushing back a little bit and, you know, cutting back a little bit on sleep, but still making sure that you're aware enough and that you have enough sleep um, and energy to move forward to the next day. Mm -hmm. And this is only for weekdays, right? Monday to Mm -hmm. Friday. Yeah. So what about the weekend? Uh, Is that your catch up on sleep, catch up on on the extracurricular on real estate investing days kind of thing? Sometimes, but it's, but one of my things is that I really want to focus on the kids and our family time because that's always been a priority for me. Mm -hmm. So the weekends often, they are spent with the kids. We'll try to find some activities for them to do with like around the areas. Like for example, like, um, you know, they'll do like, like an Easter egg hunt or we'll go to the park or, you know, we'll, we'll do some other things with them, some other activities yeah. um, and get them outside and exercising. Cause they're inside a lot, you know? Yeah. Um, so on the weekends, it's like when we can actually focus a lot of the time with them and do outside activities instead and of just both like for you guys, both you and Layla go and spend time with them. Yes. Both of us. There's some times though, where say like he's underwriting, he has to do some deals. And so I will take the kids out for a little bit and, and then for a couple hours so he can focus on it. And then when we come back, then we'll do the activities together again. But there are some times where he really, you know, needs that extra time. So we'll have to balance it out. And like, if he needs some extra time or if I need some extra time, one of us will take the kids and then spend the time with them. Um, but always one of us is with the kids, unless, you know, some, we need to go out to your property or something that will ask for some help, but that's usually how we kind of split it up. Um, but most of our time is spent with the kids on the weekends. And then, you know, if we need to, then we'll divide and conquer on watching the kids and then working on our real estate. Yeah. Does the in-law or your parents help a lot? Oh, yes. Without them, it would be very difficult. <laughs> to, you to guys do don't have a nanny can... or anything, right? They are in school. They are in school. So like, they're in daycare. Yeah. yeah. They're in school and in daycare. So they'll be, yeah. So that helps the majority of the times. And then sometimes, you know, on the weekends, it, it, we have, like we were talking, we have properties in Vegas that we'll have to go, you know, drive out over there. Maybe we'll do a day trip or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so the parent, my parents, they live like right across the street from us. So it's very convenient. So they'll come yeah. over and help and watch the kids. So mm-hmm. it's really nice that, and we're very fortunate to be able to have that support um, mm-hmm. and tap into the help when we need it. Yeah. Um, sounds very rewarding, but at the same time, very tiring as well at times, but it's very meaningful, I'm sure. Um, 
I remember I asked you about the day the morning routine, but you said there's really none. Just try to keep your eyes open and make sure everything's on. Yeah, it's a little bit hard with the morning routine because the kids don't have a routine on their own. They have their own schedule and it changes on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Sometimes they'll be able to sleep in a little bit later, but sometimes they've been waking up really early. And so you have to be able to ebb and flow with the schedule and with their schedule and try to fit in. And I think, you know, one of the things that really helps me manage my time a lot, especially in the beginning, was I had to do like a time audit also of where I was mm -hmm. spending my time. So mm -hmm. I would, you know, for a full week, I would look at every 15 minutes mm. log my time and look at where I was spending it. And at the yeah. end of the week, you can see this much time was spent here. This much time was spent here. And you realize like, Oh, I actually have a lot of extra time that I was just like, you know, I could have used it for focusing on the real estate or I could have done something else where it was just time wasted. And so when you do a time audit, it really gives you a good visual perspective of where you're spending your time, where you're spending the most of your time and how you can be more efficient with it. Yeah, time audit, I think is a big thing. If you don't wanna go for a 15 minute increment, you can even just go for a one hour increment and then be more stricter on yourself, go 30 minute and then go 15 minute. Not everyone will be able to do like 15 minute, like Cody, you're crazy, I never track my own time. Right, so kind of gradually go into it. I, like for myself, I have a calendar and Claudette, my fiance, I see my calendar, my team, like we have multiple emails. So my team can block my calendar and my team sees everything on that central business calendar. I have different businesses, a different business, a different calendar. So my backend is all tied together, including this podcast. So they, they will never like double book. Thank God up to this point, nothing is double book. And I have a personal kind of uh, um, calendar with quad ads so that we put it together for, for example, to now we go into a show, we put on and I have to block my business calendar and then block this. So just in case, wherever the like, acuity or calendar or wherever they can book me, they cannot book me. Right. Um, that's how I was able to manage it. And I just move calendar things around. And I found that really, really helpful for me. And especially when, for me, is like if something come to me, I'm not going to lie. If I'm driving, I'm going to take on my phone and just record it or even just open calendar and say, set this time, da, 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 da. So I, then I can get out of the way because I can't hold anything in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I, yeah, and I don't want to write anything down. Everything's on my phone and everything's linked up to the cloud, right? My team can all see it. So a lot of time what I found is that the voice message really helped me a lot. Because when you're driving, you don't want to text. But sometimes I know it's really bad for people who are listening to this. You shouldn't hold your phone. You might get a big fine, but I'm like, <laughs> okay, so uh, operational manager. So this is what I just thought about. I thought about this. I do this. But that for me is dumping, right? Mind dumping. Mm -hmm. so when I get to the location, I can start the real important work. And um, unfortunately, my team and all my business partners just kind of have to take that <laughs> as is <laughs> and pick it up. Um but so far it's been working really well and then getting used to it. And I found out a lot of time typing could be really good. Like email could be really good for keeping a record, but just for like in terms of tonality, in terms of sometimes you type an email, someone would be like, oh man, I'm so offended by the way you talk to me this way. Right. And like you probably like, I'll probably see it. Sometimes I type, toss lots of typos and all that. But if you do it through a verbal way, then you can, you know, a lot of things will go across better. That's, that's what I found. So, sorry, I went around circle, time audit to calendar. That's what helps me a lot. So what does your day look like, Cody? Because me with the kids and also working full-time, but then you as an a full-time entrepreneur, what does your typical day look like? Because I know you're really efficient with your time also. You, you know why I'm laughing? Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel ashamed talking about it. Um, Shame and not a shame, a shame in a way that I feel like I'm living a great life because I'm engaged, but I don't have a kids yet. And I learned to be very efficient throughout the years, um, but I don't have kids. So my schedule is a lot more stable and I can easily look at the things I want to outsource. For example, we don't have kids, but I have a dog. I usually walk him three times per day. So 
early in the morning, right? Claudia is getting ready to work. Sometimes they usually, <laughs> she didn't even eat breakfast, head out. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm walking the dog then, right? Starting at 8.30 or whatever, I start walking the dog, come back. By the time I sit in front of my computer, it's 9.15. I'm okay, let's do some important stuff. Oh, it's time for lunch. Oh, afterwards, I got to walk the dog again. Like you walk for 30 minutes, but in and out, putting on clothes, make sure I look okay somewhat. That's an out about a 45 minute to an hour thing. And a lot of time the winter is not nice in Toronto. So it's actually really brutal. So I do that three times per day. That's about two, two hours, three hours gone. Right. So that was like the lowest hang fruit for me. So I start hiring a dock walker. Right. They started with like $15 per hour, 20 hour. Whatever. So far, you know, it's 20. She's keeping that way. She's moving to my area. She has a dog. Really nice. I trust her enough that she can come into my place and just sometimes I'm not home, which is unlock with a smart lock. And then she will come in, pick up the dog, feed the dog. I teach her like roll everything on the on on the back of food. It's kind of like kids, right? One and a half scoop of this, this, this. And then you know, she will play with the dog. And um, our dog is really nice too. So that was like my lowest hanging fruit. So after I outsourced, I have two hours back. And now that tonight I'm going out for a show, I'm not worried about, oh my God, I got to come back at midnight. I got to go walk the dog and the brutal weather, right? So that was like one thing gone. And then another thing is, you know, <laughs> Claudia always laugh at me. He's like, Cody, you just try to throw money at everything. Try to solve problems. I'm like, well, I mean, yes and no. It's good that I have the ability, but to me, I know that it's just the mental capacity. A lot of people, when they start it, they're like, Cody, why do you spend 20, 25 bucks having someone walk your dog for once, right? But that time I get back, I don't have to, you know, get out of my thinking zone, right? So that was one thing. And the second thing is cleaning. Um, I don't know if you still do cleaning. I'm sure you do. Um, just that, you know, I I, I love clean place. Uh, Claudette, it's, it's very clean what she calls she's clean but she is um she has her own way but it's not dirty it's just a bit messy okay maybe some of the beautiful girls out there you guys know what i'm talking about they all look very beautiful on the outside just so you guys know but the house she has her own area she could do whatever she wants and you know the things are just in my opinion not in order but she thinks it's in order i'm okay cool uh she will come to the point and, and organize it but now we have a cleaner that comes in and do all the hard lifting, the washroom, the kitchen, the vacuuming, and then uh, the, the mopping um, two to four weeks, once every two to four weeks. So that's another thing that we don't like to do. We don't, I don't mind washing the dishes here and there, just put it in the dishwasher. Cooking, I really enjoyed it. Um, maybe the next move would be hiring a chef or just order um, food that would deliver to my place. But what I found is that because the food we're getting, uh, it's all mostly organic. And um, I try to make sure I wash them well and all of that to be very careful about that. So I still can't fully trust someone else with that. And what I have experienced for that is I don't mind paying a bit more, like 20 bucks per meal, cool, per person. But the quality goes up and down and I got tired and I got to need to switch. And then, you know, so uh, that is sort of like, the biggest, uh, sorry, the lowest hanging fruit of my day. Um, but if you want to ask, what's my day look like? <laughs> now I'm going to say, I'm probably say that <laughs> I go to bed around at 30. I sleep like a baby, wake up at 7, <laughs> 7 a.m. I'm not the type of person, you know, like Ryan Pernas, I wake up at five, you know, I go to gym, I do my thing and all that. Like, I'm at this point where I really enjoy sleep. And I found that I really need seven to eight hours of sleep. Otherwise, I'm going to give it back in some other ways. So at my sleep, I would have a seven. Um, usually I go uh, wake up and I do some stretching, yoga. Sometimes I work out. Uh, if I'm not playing golf or tennis on that day, I work out. And I just go to the gym in my condo. Um, some people like, Cody, why don't you go to a fancy gym? But the way I look at it is efficiency, right? I got to go to the gym cram of everyone. I don't like that commuting time. I try to not drive at all. I try to not go out. It's okay. If I have a gym downstairs, half decent, but you know, a lot of time you can do a lot of stuff with just your body weight. Um, so that's me. I work out in the morning if I don't go to golf or tennis. And then I block out my, no one can book my time in the morning. 
before lunchtime because that's my power hour. That's when kind of like your full time job is like that's my heavy lifting thing. Like for example, the things I need to plan for the next few weeks, or the hard conversation I need to plan it out. And just the most important things we're learning. Right right now, I'm taking a a course for short term rental. That's where I'm really learning apply right away. Learning applying two three hours per day. That's my learning time. Right and then and then all the calls I you know I'm staying still taking some business calls, sales calls here and there. And it's all in the afternoon or at night. And I just basically fit my schedule to fit Claudette's schedule. <laughs> I try to make sure that I spend as much time with Claudette as possible. So if I'm going to go work out, play golf and tennis, it's all the time that she's not home. So when she's home, I'm already home and I make the food when she comes home. Um, that's kind of how I spent my day. And then at night, you know, sometimes we chat about catching up because we're doing some, some conversion on real estate side and I'm getting her to help out with the bookkeeping teach her how to use Excel. I don't, I, I'm surprised the big banks don't actually teach people how to use Excel, <laughs> teach her how to track everything. And I'm, you know, I track everything, but she really is more freestyle. So, you know, i um, getting her into it. She's getting better. She's tracking all finance, all those stuff. And she just can do transfers at the bank for me. Um, that's pretty much our night. And then we watch, we don't, again, we don't have kids yet. She play with the dog a lot and we just enjoy the night watching some TV shows an hour or two. And sometimes if I get really excited at something, I would just keep looking at something for two, three hours until Claudia will walk in and be like, 9.30, <laughs> cut off time, cut off time. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I realized I need about an hour, an hour and a half to cut off um, my brain before I go mm -hmm. to sleep. And um, yeah, so that's why I'm kind of like really enjoying my life. <laughs> and there's a lot of traveling plans coming up, going to Vegas, which is telling Aline we're going to Vegas for a week, golf trip of some real estate investors and just truly for fun. For a county site is for business. So we're going to tie some real estate together. Um, and then and in May, I'm going to go, go to Vegas, attend a conference uh, about uh, funds, real estate funds, hedge funds, because that's our next phase. And, you know, in July, I'm going to go to Europe, uh, UK to find my friends in UK. We're going to flew into South France. I, I told him I'm going to live his life. So just take me to your company's dinner, hang out with your friends. We're going to go, go to an ABBA concert. I don't know what that is, but he told me it's a very famous in UK. I'm like, okay, well, let's go. And then, yeah, in October and November, we're going to go to Asia for about three weeks to a month for a golf trip with seven other investors. So, yeah, so... <laughs> no, but I think what you said earlier was pretty important too, because you look at the tasks that you had on hand and what are some of the things that you could outsource to free up your mind to think about the important things. And that's something that I had to learn also about as, you know, trying to figure out my time schedule was what are some of the things that I could outsource so what I had to do also was get a virtual assistant to help me, you know, find guests for the podcast to set up all, um, you know, like the profiles and things like that. So that when I go to the interviews, everything is all said and done. And I just have to show up and just do the interview itself. So what are some of the things that you can outsource to other people so that you can free up your time to focus on the important things that you really enjoy doing and where your time is the best spent? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love learning. So every day, regardless, I will put in time to learn and everyone's different. I read really slow, but I listen really fast. So all my audiobook podcasts is two X, sometimes two and five X because I can retain the knowledge really fast that way. And I take notes, take action. Um, that's one thing. And of course, you know, my coaching part, of the stock option, you guys keep hearing the, the B rolls about, you know, if you want to refine initial freedom, that's my stock option side. We have six to eight people. Took us like three years to build it up. Like hire the coaches from within. We have all the back end figure out. We're turning on the ads really soon. We have operational manager. We have success coach for each student. We have like KPI for them and continue improving. I have to sales people, outreach people and all that. So that's why I can pull myself out. Like, is it expensive? Yeah, it's expensive, right? And my social media team will come about a day or two every month, depending like, 
uh, depending on the month, depending on how efficient I am. Some days I'm just like, bang, bang, bang. I'm all done. Some days I'm just like, please carry me. <laughs> I'll be out here a little bit. Can you repeat it one sentence in one sentence for me? I, I, I can't, I can't speak a word right now. Right. So kind of depending on the day, but I just kind of, I carb, I just basically block the time mm. and set the time for that. And the rest is just like, okay, how much time I left? I really want to get better at golf, get better at tennis, better at business and learning other stuff. And I don't know, like, it, it's very funny because a lot of people might laugh at me, but I actually booked my vacation first and I reverse engineer that. I really cherish the time that I can spend freely like this right now. And Claudia and I are actually talking about maybe taking a year off before we have kids, just really enjoying it or get to the point where like, we're so tired of traveling that we want to come back home and have kids. Like, seriously, I'm done with that, at least for a few years, then we can have kids. Right. But right now I'm really enjoying that balance of, you know, even if I go on a vacation, I can block off the early morning or early late night time to, for key meetings and in between is all mine. Right, whether the sales calls, operation calls, key calls. So I'm taking advantage of that and I plan backwards. I if I someone say, Cody, you want to do this? I'm like, I'm interested in that, I will make it happen. Like people know they call me as like, Cody, you're in for this, da 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 seven days in Vegas. That happened in a day. <laughs> I'm like, Claudia, are you good? She's like, Well, I guess so. Okay, that means it's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jason, I'm good. <laughs> so you know, I'm really lucky that way. Um, lucky and lucky, I kind of engineer my way into this. Is there a lot of things that could be improved? Yes, but I think I'm getting to 70, 80% of that. So that there are days where I'm sitting here, but like, what am I going to do? And I really love that feeling because when I have those feelings, it's not like, okay, so I can double down my existing business or should I explore something else, right? Of course, I, you know, we want to grow our business into eight figure really before I start thinking about anything else, right? Just focus on one or two and that's it, right? Otherwise, I'm just spreading myself too thin. It all adds up to less overall revenue and more headaches and, you know, all that, so. Yeah, and definitely. And when you're trying to look at your time too, it's trying to figure out and and giving yourself a little bit of grace to have those days where it's like, I just need some time for myself. You're go, go, go all the time sometimes, and you can get burnt out also. Mm -hmm. But when you have a lot of that, what they call gold time, where you spend it, where you feel the most fulfilled, that's when you get to re-energize. That's when you can get fulfilled. And then you can go back and remember, I want more of this gold time. What can I do in order to get that? Yeah, that, again, everyone who's listening to this, like if you don't have kids yet, you can have my life if you really find ways to have high income skills, right? Whatever that is. Um, but if you're like Aline, have kids, again, less flexibility, but you can you can still have control. There are days that you don't have control, but you can still engineer in the ways that means that you probably have to give up other things that unfortunately are less important. But overall, what I found, again, I'm only 32. So what do I know what I'm talking about is that you really have to make enough money because with enough money and you have the right skills, you can really outsource a lot of things. Uh, if you don't, you better hope you have a supporting family or supporting friends, or you have a supporting partner <laughs> to make it more smooth, right? Otherwise something will break, right? If I, if you don't exercise enough, your health might, you know, and then you start eating a lot of takeout food, it actually costs you more money and all kind of adds up, right? Right. And it's not just about the money also. It's That's a big part of it too, to be able to outsource a lot of the help that you need. But one of the other things that have been vital that you mentioned also, and that we also have really great in our, in our business also is partners, because you can't do everything on your own. And so if you have the partners to, you know, take over for the times when you're not able to be there and they're strong enough to be standalone and you know, things are still going to be running smoothly when you're focused on something else too. And then you can come together and work out things that needs to get done together as a team. That's so important too, because not all of us can do everything on our own, Correct. especially when you're in the growth phase. 
Correct. You can definitely do things on your own too, but you're just going to be spreading yourself a lot more thin. Mm. Um, there's going to be less times to do other things that you want to do. Mm. But when you have really strong partners, it really helps. Mm -hmm. And it's, you're able to get together there further and faster than if you were to do it all on your own. Yeah. It's like, do you want a whole grape or half a watermelon? <laughs> Which one's bigger? Half a watermelon or even a quarter of watermelon is bigger than a grape. So that's very key, but that's a skill on its own. And I believe that before you can manage your own time, you can't really manage other people's time, right? Because mm -hmm. you're, you're a mess yourself. I know a lot of entrepreneurs run like that. Just like, I don't even know where I spend my time. Just have my assistant book my calendar, all that. I still control all my calendar. I don't want anyone controlling my calendar, but I am really efficient at it. Um, that's the part I don't want to give up control. I don't want to wake up to the day and I have to look at my calendar and I'm like, oh, I don't want to talk to that person. Why do you please reschedule? I don't want that. I, you know, I, I want to engineer in a way that like people come on my podcast, like unless it's referred by Aliens, I personally kind of pick it myself and, you know, and I'm okay with if there's no guests, I would just talk about something. There are episodes in the past like that, but I'm just come to the point where, you know, um, that's make me really happy in this stage of life. And, um, and then there's a lot of things to learn and go through to know how to scale a team and give them the right ownership, give them the right trust. But in the beginning it's tough three to six months is tough and you got to be over them to, to eventually give little by little. And it's just like teaching a kid too, right? You don't try to like tell them a step one to 10, just like step one, two done, come back three, four, another month, come back five, six. Okay. Eventually it will get there. Right. And then when they get there, it's so great. But when you try to overwhelm them, everything and say, here you go, you should be able to do this. Then everyone get overwhelmed. Even my dog walker get overwhelmed. Right. First I teach them, oh, this is where you walk kind of thing. If you want to explore cool. Then next, this is how you feed him half of it. And then another half This is our routine at night. And then everything kind of comes together. So you kind of have to have the leadership and a little bit of patience as well. So yes, it's not just money. Sorry. That's what Claude said. Is that you just tried to throw money at everything? <laughs> but it's more complicated than that. I didn't realize the skills that we have already because of our lifestyle. But you know, so that's why I only think I'm just spending money. But no, it's actually a lot of leadership skills, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that we, we think can add to the Time management besides time audit you started from one hour, 30 minute, 50 minute, really find out where is the lowest hanging fruit and just really that first step, you will be surprised. And I think that was our step one. So we're not going to overwhelm you from step one to 10, but step one, time audit. And step two is just find the lowest hanging fruit based on priority and whether you want to outsource, right? Some people might say, I never want to outsource and hire a nanny, right? Is that a personal belief? barrier or is that really something that you really cherish right because there's always different you know belief let, and all that so, let me add let me add what let me let me change that really quick okay change it. Between, you go for it no 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 just just between your step one and step two i think step one got a time audit and then step two i think figuring out where your goal time is and what you want to do with that time and then look at the low hanging fruit and then figure out what can you outsource or what can you cut off so that way you can have more time to to do more of that goal time that you're looking for do you want to explain goal time a little bit i know you explained in the past but yeah no goal time is like the the place the the activities that give you the most fulfillment in life the ones the the activities that really fulfill you that gives you meaning that gives you drive to be able to get up in the morning and focus on the tasks that you want to be able to do and so it leads you for all the different activities throughout the day so that you can free up your time to get more of that goal time and so everything that you're doing basically is finding ways to increase that goal time in your life. Yeah. And step one, step two. So really just to add on to that, like our podcast goal is really not about making the most amount of money. It's more about making enough money and continue to help more people and help yourself first to get more goal time. That's maybe a new slogan to really get more time and money to do the things you really like, because that is a positive reinforcement of what you're doing. And you're going to be a happier person and people around you are going to be happier to your team, your business partner, going to be happier 
around it as well, right? Um, so that's that's my takeaway for it. No, love it. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just doing a lot of goal time, I guess. Tennis, golf, mm -hmm. shows, travel, right? So cool. So uh, anything else to add, Aline? No, I think that's a wrap, Cody. That's a wrap. So here you guys have it. Time management from High Income Earners Fire Podcast. And then the next episode, we're going to talk about the more in, even more details. We're going to book the next time, probably. Uh, probably going to be in a few weeks or a few months. But our episode two, we're going to talk about the wheel of happiness, how we balance between friends, family, spouse, partners, and communities. And then second part, you know, the recreation, third part, the health, career, finance, business, and the last and the most important is spiritually and how do you contribute more back to society. So we're going to balance all that and talk about how we do it kind of in our own way and um, hope you guys can all learn something and or critique something and let us know. If you guys let us know in the review or let us know the email or anything, feel free to do that. And that's it. That concludes this uh, episode. See you guys on the next one. Thank you. Bye. All the links mentioned in this episode are included in the show notes. And if you love this episode, please leave us a rating and review on Apple iTunes. The link is also included in the show notes. And we would really appreciate your help in spreading the word to more high income earners on how they too can maximize both their time and money. Also, if you still haven't joined our high income earners Facebook group, you are missing out on high income earners community where we help each other reach our own version of fire.